welcome to this week's piece. So this is an adorable little combo dresser. I'm so excited about it. It's like the perfect size for baby's clothes and diapers and blankets and things like that. So it's just kind of perfect. And did I mention it was $5? Because that's pretty awesome. It also came with a bonus power strip that I'll be taking off. And there's a lot of drill holes in the back, which I'm going to leave because why? All right. So this paint is coming off super easily. I mean, it's just peeling. I'm going to see how it does with a sander. I think it might gum up the sandpaper just based on the texture of it, but we'll see what happens. Um, and then I will probably go the scraper route because I think that's just going to be the fastest. But we'll check a sander first. I'm going to go ahead and just run around the piece and remove all the hardware. I will keep it in my stash, but I'm not keeping it for this piece. Now I started sanding on the drawers and I was expecting this to be maple or something to that effect. This is a veneer, but it's a really thick veneer and it's a walnut. So there's a few spots that have chipped and needs repair, but I think I'm not going to sand all of this paint off. I think I'm going to just give myself a smooth surface to paint over the top of this paint and make sure nothing else chips up, get all the, like the loose bits of it because later on I'm gonna wanna refinish this and keep this wood <laughs> because it's so pretty. So I don't want to sand all the way back down to wood and then paint over it and then sand all the way back down to wood again late at a later date. So since the top I'm going to leave wood, I'll get that all the way down and then everywhere else like I said I will go through and sand over it give it kind of a scuff sand make sure no pieces are coming off and then smooth out the finish a little bit that way I'm not going through the veneer later on also because I really love this and I think I'm gonna want it for something else once baby doesn't need it anymore um, and here I'm just taking this is just like a little multi-tool um, and I'm scraping out all the teeny tiny flecks of paint that are stuck in the grain because that's fun. So I saw this paper and I fell in love with it. I know it can be like a bit steampunk-esque, but that's not the route that I'm going to go with it. I really like hot air balloons and I like that these ones aren't like the crazy rainbowy ones and it has like an airship and I just think it's super cool and I think it'd be fun for this. So that's where we're going with it. I ordered my papers off of Zazzle. I always leave a link to them in the description. Um, and in this one, since they now come with three instead of two, it used to be when you ordered a paper, you got two. Now you get three. I think the prices have also gone up. So there's pros and cons to that. Um, anyways, so I'm using two papers for these doors because one sheet is not quite large enough to do both of them. And I'm just picking two separate sides. So on the one door, I'm gonna do like the airship and on the other door, I'll just do mostly the hot air balloons and that will kind of be how it opens up. So to start, I am just making sure that I have a smooth surface. These doors were already white on the inside, so I didn't have to pre-paint anything. I just left the white in there so the papers will show up just fine. And then I apply all my decoupage papers with poly. Um, in this particular case, I'm using the dead flat, which doesn't matter if you have gloss or if you have satin, it all works great. Whatever your favorite brand of poly, I can't say whatever your favorite brand of poly is, but all the ones that I've used, I've not had any issues with. 
So I just get it on there and then I'll work from one direction to the other. So I'll either start at the top and work my way down or start at the bottom and work my way up depending on the piece that I'm working on. Um, and then also when I went to cut this out, I did cut it down to size a bit just because it's easier to work with on a smaller scale, but I make sure that I leave an overhang, just not a very large one, but one that I can sand off and give it a really nice finish at the end. So you'll kind of see that better on this door where my giant self is not blocking the door entirely. Um, yeah, so I'm just kind of placing it, seeing where I like the paper, what print I want on there, and then I will give it a rough cut just to fit. And then it's not a big deal, like sticking it back on there. I'm going to have enough room around all the edges in case it shifts a little bit. I'm not going to have a gap of where there's no paper. Again, I just applied some of the poly to the door and then get it on there. And then I will use the brush, dip it back in, and I actually am using the brush here to smooth it down and apply the paper slowly. So you can see I started from the top in this case and I'm working my way down. I'm holding out the bottom as I go. And this just helps prevent wrinkles and all that stuff. I am not one that really cares about having wrinkles in my print. Obviously, I don't want anything huge that's very distracting, but if I have a couple tiny ones, I'm usually not terribly worried about it just because of the finishes that I do. If you are somebody who likes pristine papers, you can steam them ahead of time. You can use like the cellophane trick. You can use brayers. You can wait till it dries and do an iron. There's tons and tons of different ways to give yourself a pristine finish. I'm just not one of those people. Okay, so here um, I'm going in with the top coat again and I'm sealing over. You can see I use the sander over this and smoothed out the paint so I have a smoother surface, but I'm actually sealing it in with my top coat because I don't want any paint to go back into that grain because like I said, I want to refinish this later back to wood. But for now, <laughs> I want it to be for baby. So that's why I'm sealing it in so that I can have a little protective layer over it for later on. And then here I'm just giving the wood a spray so I can see what it looks like because the top is a veneer of walnut and then the bottom is like a maple and it's quite a bit lighter and a different tone. So here I'm just taking, this is the colonial wood stain. It is a water-based stain and I'm just going to deepen up that edge there because it doesn't have the veneer on it just to make it a little more matchy-matchy so that when I put the sealer on, it matches. So this will just go around the edges and then I'm not staining or doing anything to the top wood at all because I love that part. And about this time, my papers have dried, so I'm just gonna take a bit of sandpaper, run it along the edges, and clean them up and give myself a smooth finish. So there are a couple parts that were just being a bit irritating because they're sunken in where the hinges go, but it's fine. Okay, real quick, I'm just, I have one of the papers out so I can see all the colors. And a lot of times I will just pull out colors that I think will work and not necessarily use all of them, but just have them just in case. So that's what I'm doing here. I'll show you guys what this looked like on the website. It is a different palette than what actually came, which can sometimes happen. So. It's not my favorite. I mean, I still like the print, but I was expecting the tones to be a bit different. This has a lot more purpley, like pinks to it. And the print on the computer or my phone um, was more warm, beige, grayish, more neutral. This is less neutral. So anyways, those are the colors on there. And then down here, I've got Woodland Harbor, Seal Gray. This is just, those two will get a slight mix in them. This is gonna be a very swirly blended finish, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And obviously the papers are on the inside of the cabinet. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect, 
but I kind of want to do a mimicry of it. I've got Mellow White out just to add lightness where I need it. Um, Goblin Gray because there seems to be a bit of like those tealy colors. Ocean Spray to add in those same tealy colors but in the lighter areas. Um, Sunday Sunset which is kind of like a mauvey pink color which you wouldn't think would go with it but it does if it's right in on there. I'll show you. See this is what I'm talking about. It should have no pinks in it but it does. Um, again, pastel peach just for some of the lighter areas, just in case I may not use them, not sure. Golden yellow, and then of course like this almost kind of like a burnt orange color. And then for a shore to kind of do the mid-tone browns. So again, I may not use all of these, but I have them just in case because obviously it's easier to work with wet paint and get it blended than it is to have the paint dry, get up, try and find colors and go from there. So anyways, just breaking it with some thoughts. Mentioned I've got my Mr. Bottle and some pretty large brushes to work on. And then this guy, um, I'm hoping to do more of the blends with it because as you can see, this is very kind of swirly blendy. So I'm gonna use a large brush for that to hopefully get all those in there. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, but It'll also lay down a lot faster with those giant brushes. All right, so this is where we're on that on the first coat. I'm liking where it's headed. It's obviously very streaky because it's the first coat and I'm using very stiff bristle, bristle brushes and I never used the big brush, which is very smooth. And then these are the only colors that I used. So I went down to five. So just to show you things change in the process, but I like just having them just in case. All right, so now I'm gonna start on this one since I know what colors I'm using and how to go about it, and then I'll film this whole process. So this is one of my most favorite kinds of blends and also conveniently one of the most easy blends because it's so swirly. Um, it's not a perfectly smooth transition into everything because I want all those other colors to show so I'm starting down at the bottom here with Woodland Harbor, which is the deep dark brown. And I'm actually going to mix in some of the Goblin Gray with this, which will actually deepen this up and throw in some of those teal colors that are in the bottom. I am not one that really cares if paints get mixed a little bit. If you are somebody who is, I've had a couple of you, you get very upset about me not caring about that. If you care about that, Depot your colors, put them in something else, and then you'll always have them. However, since the vast majority of my finishes are never a single color, it doesn't ever matter that I have a bit of color mixed in. Mind you, my paints are not crazy. They're not an entirely different color than they once were, but I'm just not so concerned about dipping my brush in <laughs> if it has a little bit of other paint on it. Um, so I'm going to put that out there for those of you who kind of freak out about that. If it's something that bothers you, by all means, depot and do what you need to do for yourself. But this is how I work and it has served me well. So I will continue to do this. Anyways, back up to the top. The top, I'm doing just a strip of Goblin Gray, which is too dark. However, we're going to go in and add the white. So I've got the Goblin Gray. I added in the orange and now I'm going to take the white and run over that. Now the whites are usually where I will care about getting other colors put in there just because they take on other colors so easily. So I'll have like a, a towel and a cloth out that I can spray my brush down with, clean it off, and then dip in if I have to. You can also have an additional blending brush out to blend all those colors together. That way you're not contaminating your white or lighter colors. So here I'm just kind of going back and forth. And on the papers, one side is more heavily like that um, purpley brown kind of color in the deeper, richer tones. And then the other side is more of like the lighter, brighter, orangey areas. So I kind of mimicked that on this piece. So one side is going to be a little bit darker and one side is going to be a little bit lighter just because that's how the papers were. Not that it matters, like it's just for my own self, right? 
But anyway, so I just keep going back and forth with these colors until I like the way that it looks. I'm doing lots of swirly blends. If you want smooth transitions, again, you can get that. You just keep working with it, add a little water, have a softer bristle brush, that helps sometimes too. But I really want these like kind of aggressive swirls in this. So that's what I'm doing with the like the larger, stiffer bristled brushes. And here's what I was talking about. You can just spray your brush and then make sure you get all your bristles cleaned off. And that will bring your brush back to clean so you're not muddying up. Because that happens too sometimes where you're just kind of swirling all into the same color again. And it's not, you don't have the definitive colors and you want that. Alright, here's how the front is looking with the first coat. And I adore it. So now I did a little trim around the inside of the doors. But then I had to finish doing the blend with them closed so you can see a little paint in there. So I just open the doors and brush that out so that it matches on the inside edge there. And then there's a teeny tiny bit of paint on top right there. And I'll just take a wet cloth and wipe that back so it's off the wood. So I'm just taking the similar colored brush that I already have out and brushing it out in this area. And then I can switch when I get around to the outer edges where it's darker. I've also been known to use my finger here and just use my finger to smear out the paint because it's that same paint going around there. And then here I did have to do a little extra scrubbing just because this top isn't sealed. Had I sealed this first, it would have just wiped right off and would have been lovely, except I didn't. So I just have to do a little more scrubbing power, but it all comes off in the end. Now I'm just going in with the second coat. Second coat's always easiest because you're not building your blend you're smoothing it out and making the transition a little easier and kind of redefining what you liked about the first coat and making this one better so it's the exact same process only it's just easier and better so here i'm going in this is a gloss because this is for a baby's room and it's easier to clean up anything with gloss on it so I'm just getting it on, doing long strokes to smooth it out. And then I'll go around the edges and do that. Just super easy peasy. This entire piece is going to get sealed with the same stuff. And then I even went back over the papers on the inside of the doors with this as well. So they have the matte top coat over the papers on the inside. And then also this over the top of them as well. So it's kind of sealed down doubly. So once I get the entire thing sealed up with the gloss, except for these side inset panels, I did the entire, just the insets with the matte, which will make sense in a bit. Um, and because I'm going to do multiple layers on here, I'm just going in with a fine grit sandpaper and sanding this smooth. And then any other areas on the piece where I felt like it just needed a little smoothness. And I'll go through and do my second coat of the gloss. Now, along with the second coat of the gloss, I'm going to add stripes to the side, but they're going to be subtle stripes. You guys know how much I love stripes. I just, I love them. And since we're not doing gold gilding on this, which, shame, I know, um, I'm actually going to do 
gloss stripes over the matte that we had there. And it's very subtle, but it's oh so cool and looks incredible. Doesn't cover up any of the blends that I did, but just adds a little something. Um, I also forgot to mention that on the other side of this, because I had those extra pieces of paper that I didn't get to use on um, the inset doors because the doors were smaller than the papers, so I had extra balloons and things like that, I just hand cut out the hot air balloons and then decoupage them on to the other side, which I photographed and you can see later, but it's just decoupaging individual balloons that I cut out of the papers onto the side of this. And because I am bringing this back to my childhood dreams of things that I would like, I'm kind of envisioning like Wizard of Oz slash the Labyrinth and things like that. And do you remember the lion's head door knockers? I have always wanted one of those since I was a very small child. And I came upon these and I was like, you know what? They kind of fit. <laughs> and I know it's a little bit weird for a baby's <laughs> dresser, but I love them and I'm the mom. And... I'm the only one that cares about this stuff right now. So I go, I went ahead and, and put these on here and I adore them. Now, one of the holes on the drawer was too large for the screw and it I couldn't tighten it down enough. So I just keep a box of these washers. This is a fun tip. You just put it on the back side and it will hold your screw out so that you can get a tight fit. Then I'm going in with copper because let's face it, that paper had a lot of coppers in it. And so that's also the kind of hardware that I got. It's kind of like a distressed um, copper finish. And I'm just going to take a detail brush and run in these very fine lines all around the front of this and I think it looks so good. Oh hi, Taryn here with Elia Upgrades and we've got our finished piece. Super cute. I can't wait to get it upstairs. I did line the inside with some wallpaper because it's fast and easy and very wipeable. So that's great. Um, I'm excited to get this upstairs. I've got to stage it. I will obviously put in some photos once it's done. I'm gonna try some AI stuff because I don't think I'm gonna put it in the room for a bit. So we'll see. I've never done it before or I could just take it up. I have like a staging wall upstairs that I typically use for furniture when I'm at the house. It's so much easier at the shop, but I'm not going to take it to the shop, bring it back home. You guys know. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. This was really fun for me to do. And obviously it'll be sticking around for a while. And we'll most likely get another makeover in some years. Because I think it's super cool. But, you know, baby could want something completely different later on in life. Which is totally fine. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time.